She's not a minor Mr. anymore. Hang on, Mr. Gabato. Come on, come on. <laughs> if our Nevada judges sure. does not know. All right, good morning. We're calling case D23. Can I have appearances for the record? Good morning, Your Honor. Michelle Hauser, attorney. Michelle Hauser, bar number 7738. On behalf of the plaintiff, who I'm unclear is online. I know it was her intent to appear today, but I also know due to her job commitments that there was a potential she could not be here because things get delayed. That's fine. Yeah, and I and I apologize to everyone for the delay. I'm now officially no, running really behind. All right. Um, and next, may I be seated, Your Honor? I'm sorry. Yeah, absolutely. Thank, Thank you. you. Yeah, good morning, Your Honor. Alex Cavado, 10592. On behalf, he was remote, but uh, he was having technical difficulties. So, I ask the court to just waive his appearance today. Okay. Thank you. Good morning, Your Honor. Luke Busby, appearing for our Nevada judges. All right. Good morning. Thank you, guys. Um, this is this is the time set just for the objection to the media request that was filed, um, and then we had um, our Nevada judges' response to the objection. Um, I've read all the papers. I know the um, objection is based upon Ms. being a public figure, a, a, an officer of the court, a judge. Alex here. Uh, the uh party in question to this divorce that Judge McConnell is talking about is another family court judge in the same courthouse. I'll talk a lot more about what's going on here at the end of the video. Um, and our Nevada judges are saying there's no, they understand that. Um, but the Constitution and um, the Supreme Court has stated that we still need to open um the hearings, unless there's a, you know, we have to set forth specific findings as to why we aren't going to open the proceedings and what purpose it's going to serve um, for not opening up the, the um, proceedings. Ms. Hauser, I don't think, Mr. Gabata, you didn't file anything. I don't know if you want to add your 10 cents or two cents well, today, but let me start with Ms. Hauser. And your may remain seated or would you like me to yeah, You can sit. That's fine. Thank you. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, first and foremost, with regard to the defendant um, commenting, you did issue a minute order or specific order that responses were due. Uh, they did not respond, so I would think that due process would require them not to be able to respond today because we have no indication what their statements or thoughts are. Um, if they want to respond, then I would ask for a continuance of this hearing because I have no idea what your position is beyond they did not file an objection. Mm -mm. And, and I know I'm not supposed to assume anything, but my assumption would be they didn't object to it. They don't object to the media request. That would be my assumption. And if that's that, right. that's a fair, right. but then beyond comments, then due process would require them to find a response. So with that preliminarily being said, what I would point out to this court is the landscaping of Falcone has drastically changed since the Falcone decision has drastically changed since you entered your order. Your order. Just this week, Your Honor, a petition for rehearing was filed on behalf of one of the parties in interest and behalf of the AML. Moreover, Your Honor, this court, through their legal counsel, is filing a petition for rehearing. That petition for rehearing is not due, oddly enough, until April 3rd. It's my understanding that other briefing will be conducted. I mean, obviously, I don't know what the Supreme Court is going to do. If they're going to grant petitions for hearing, hearing, our amicus brief is going to be invited. But right now, the state of the opinion is in flux. But it's still a, it, it I is. mean, it's and still under, law, right? Well, pending the petition for rehearing. Right. And what will happen is, Your Honor, well, let's keep in mind that this was a 4-3 decision. This was not, I mean, it was unanimous because there was one vote. But the dissenting opinion was spot on as it relates to this case. And what will happen, Your Honor, is if you were to grant the media request, and this is only on for the April 3rd hearing, if the decision is modified or altered in any way, what you can't do, Your Honor, is unring that bell. You can't put the genie back in the bottle. No. And so there are issues here with the underlying Falcone decision, 
And it is best to be cautious and let this Nevada Supreme Court, when we have a 4-3 decision, which specifically, I don't know how to say this, Justice Stiglitz was 100% right in her arguments. 080 was not before the Nevada Supreme Court. They went beyond the scope of the pending issues. So there is a possibility that that in and of itself would, could be changed. <clears throat> and with this amount of litigation and the issues before the court, especially the April 3rd hearing, Your Honor, the April 3rd hearing is primarily financial in matter. It's a partial motion for summary judgment. In that hearing, the court is going to have to hear specific information regarding the address of my client. And that address is protected. It's going to have to hear the address of other properties. Because of the positions Mr. has taken, you're going to have to go over financial documents that would include bank records, would include the bank account numbers. Under NRS 205.617, the statute, Nevada right by statutes, have already defined personal identifying information, which includes social security numbers, checking account numbers, savings account numbers, credit card numbers, debit numbers, financial services accounts, date of birth, place of employment, and it goes on. How does this court craft an order when the primary issue on April 3rd will encompass all the very information that is personal identifying information under NRS 205.617, subsection 1A? What was that, NRS 205.617, 1A? How do you craft that order? More importantly, Your Honor, I understand that our Nevada judges says, well, we will redact information. But what you don't know, unless you want to have an evidentiary hearing on it, which is what you would have to do, is how are the originals kept and maintained? The original? Video hearings. How, once they record it, when this hearing is recorded, this becomes a record of the court. It's protected under the court. The original of this video hearing, you have no information in their pleadings, and only can you seek that information. How do they maintain it? How do they scrutinize the employees? How, who has access? What third parties have access? There's nothing this court can order that would prevent the original hearing tape being accessed and undermining any order you craft that would protect the confidential information that's already allowed for under the address under statute and under NRS 4617. The only way you would be able to do that under a due process is you would have to conduct an evidentiary hearing and be, our Nevada judges, through Mr. Falcone, would have to take the stand and be subject to cross-examination. Because you have no information before this court, as it stands, what happens to the original hearing tape. How are they maintaining it? Who has access to it? How do you craft an order to protect the original? You don't have jurisdiction if that original would be compromised. And the exact information that is protected, you don't have jurisdiction to hold, and I'm not saying it could, I mean it happens. No matter what Mr. Falcone does, as it relates to employees, employees go rogue. You have no jurisdiction, Your Honor, to potentially bring in a rogue employee who uses that original with confidential information to their own benefit. But, when we be able to hold our Nevada judges responsible for that? I don't think you can. Because if we give a specific order, they have to abide by the order because now they've been brought in. They have to abide by the order, and if they don't, that could affect their ability to ever be in anyone's courtroom. And I understand that, but I don't think you have the jurisdiction to bring them in if an employee does. I mean, I understand your question, then their response is going to be, well, that was an employee. That was not intentional. Well. And, again, Your Honor, if that were to happen, what's the remedy? Say you're right. You bring them in. I understand. But the damage is done. The damage is done. If that confidential information, especially 
with this hearing. Now, that's what we're here on the April 3rd hearing. We do have a trial coming up. Depending on the results of the April 3rd hearing, certainly our Nevada judges could file another request to appear at the trial, and that would be, and that's the problem inherently with the Falcone decision and how they've laid the groundwork for the district court judges. We're only here on one hearing. These hearings in family law, they're not stagnant. They are constantly changing over time. So Unless the case isn't sealed, they come in whenever they want. If it's sealed, they would have to file each time. Yes, and that's what they would have to do. I'd also submit to your honor that 125.110 was not addressed in the Falcone decision. This is a sealed case, and by operation of the sealed case, you have to seal the hearings. How can the documents that are inherently sealed now be disclosed? It makes no sense. And I am concerned. I mean, yes, if Mr. Falcone's employee or somebody else gets the originals, I understand we can bring them in. But you, what you can't do is unring the harm if those are used by a third party for identity theft to wipe out bank accounts. I mean, we're working in a different a day I understand age. that. And, 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 they, and they like, don't have From the liability. beginning, you guys, this is like just as a personal, you know, everyone. I, anyone who's in this courtroom getting a divorce, having a child custody action, I would think that everyone would come in and say, I deserve a little bit of privacy because these are, some of this stuff is horrible. And to just splash it out there and because in all honesty, if we're using it to evaluate what's going on in court systems, I get it. I totally understand that 100%. If we're using it, which I don't think our Nevada judges is doing it like this, but the people out there would could use it for their own fodder. Oh, I'm gonna put this up here on everywhere and make fun of these people. And so I understand, like coming in today, I understand the whole privacy issue. I, I understand that. And being in a position as someone else, you know, in this situation is, it is scary. But I think even before, even without, you know, without even being a judge, you know, you walk in, Ms. Hauser, and get a divorce, all of your stuff's going to be open as well. And do you get not enough, you don't get the same protection as someone else just because of who they are in the community? And I think that's what our Nevada judges is saying is, listen, I should, we should be able to come in and hear these cases. And why are these sealed and nothing else? And like I said, I, I get it. We're talking about a lot of private, a lot of private stuff. Um, and where, that's the question, where do we, we, I think it comes down to making specific findings. Our Nevada judges, if you tape this, maybe we can craft an order where the originals be held. Um, and, Cause I, I, I understand your concern, Ms. Hauser. I, I fully completely do. But it's not just because of who your client is. I feel like that for anyone getting yeah, a divorce. Question should be treated you know, we have people who are millionaires that they, you know, they're just someone that may work at a business, but they've make, done really great with their money and they're millionaires. And they would walk in and we don't have any protection for them just because of their, you know, they're just out in the community. Um, but they, they would have the same concerns, someone coming in. I mean, I've thought that for years. When I started practicing family law, anyone can access the stuff. Um, but, you know, there's a way of crafting it that, no, we can, we, can, we can address assets by numbers. We could all stipulate. Number one is this asset off the record, so our Nevada judge doesn't know what that is. You say, as asset number one, Mr. What do you, and, you know, and, and, and that the, might the help. The primary concern for my client is obviously her safety. I understand. And the safety right. of a minor child. And you're right. I mean, I am surprised that the defendant <laughs> is not more concerned about the safety of her, their minor child. I mean, regardless. She's not a minor as anymore. Court, as district court judges and parties, whoever comes into the court, the primary concern should be the safety of the children. Right. And if this court can craft an order where. She's not a minor judges, anymore. Hang on, Mr. Gabato. Come on, come on. If our Nevada judges sure. does not know, if we say number one is this, is this, and this, and they don't have access to what that number one is referenced to, then I think that is an excellent that resolution. Could be a fair. And that would be resolve it. Because okay. then we don't have the issues of the right. original. 
we don't have the issues that I articulate. Right. And I, if that's what the court wants to do, and if our Nevada judges is fine with that. <laughs> She's then, looking at Mr. Falcone. And, Sorry, and Mr. Busby. <laughs> yeah, and the same, the same goes for, you know, my client. Yes, I understand what her job does. Right. But she should not be treated any differently. In all right. of our Nevada judges, the party's names are redacted. Right. And, and I think we're you blur out faces. The names, I don't know where the, the yes. faces, the minor child's name. This is primarily a concern about the safety. Right. Mr. Falcone did because recognize that, yes, I mean, judges right. are attacked. We had a judge just right. attacked. Right. We've had judges killed nationwide. I understand. And and, and 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 if that's what the court wants to do, and whether it's a my, and I'll be honest, whether it's a minor child or just turning eighteen and graduating in a month or two, Mr. Cavado, um, you know, people will use a minor, a newly not minor child, a twenty-five year old child who's in college well, to get to to, by, to by get to someone judiciary. of interest if they want. Yeah, I mean, I mean we look at but, a far brain is a child was killed by nature of a parent being a judge. My client does not want her right. child. And so yeah. I and, and I think and I think Mr. Falcone or and may, you know just the Iron Nevada judges in general has been has been fair with that. I don't you know you don't at least I haven't heard because I don't sit there and I don't watch a bunch of stuff or anything. But my understanding is based upon what I hear in the courthouse is faces are blurred um, at least with regards to the kids. I don't know you can. I think it's the parties. Even the, the parties, parties, right? Parents and the kids. Okay. Only Okay, and so and, so, and I feel the... like they're trying to. I I feel. I, I mean, I'll be honest. I again, I've stated where I I understand one hundred percent Miss statement. I you know, but again, I feel like that with anyone who's coming into family court. You know, it's I mean, all it open like... for anyone. But I also I do feel like our Nevada judges is trying to be fair with regards to how they handle the situation. But and Mr. Busby, if you want to pop in, you can. I mean, but my thought like is. Falcone if we do okay, if we submit confidential and they don't have the address. Because we could have Ms. Hauser and Mr. Gabato submit to the court under left side file separate or, or even email, email it to my JEA, my Because the left side filing, we are having issues with the when we try to left side file. Well you could yeah, you could send it, it to my JEA. Into the docket. And they will okay, we'll make sure it's either Left side filed, or they'll give it to me as long as you both are copied on it. Just Gabato and um, Hauser. I mean, I will be happy to and take say, delayed and because we have supplemental briefing coming right. up. Number one is this X. account, and I will know what we're referring to because I'll have it in front of me. But our Nevada judges won't. Um, anyone else who pops in won't have it, and um, you know we won't list any personal information. We won't list any faces or the identity. We won't list the kids' names. I, you know, he's already stated he doesn't do that um, because we do. Again, it's we always say the minor child, but again, we live in a crazy world. The child doesn't have to be minor. And I know when they get out of the house, they're still left there out for fodder for anyone to take advantage of them if someone sees fit. Oh, there's Miss Child who's in college now, but I'm going to go after him just to get back in the because I don't like her. So if and we that's don't, the primary that's concern. what. So if you can draft the order and with a sanction, if either yes. counsel, and that with a sanction should apply to me. I'm not exempt from the law. Right. But if either counsel or their clients, clients use anything right. outside that scope, that should be sanctionable. Right. Because this is crafted to protect. Right. And so, safeguard the 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 interests of. Would anyone have any objection to Ms. Hauser drafting the order, re sending it out to all three, well, I guess the other, Mr. Busby and Mr. Gabato, um, with the specifics as to what will not be disclosed and how we're going to, um, that every asset will be determined by a number. For this and, upcoming hearing. Cause there's yeah, for the upcoming hearing. hearing. And then, I mean, if, if the same thing happens at the trial, it'll be at the trial as, as well. Yeah, we'll but, have to, because we, we number. Right, right, right. But we'll... At each at each hearing, we'll have numbers. We won't disclose any personal inf information about anyone. Their um, personal information, their faces, um, and I guess. Your Honor, I'd like to be heard before the court rules, if yes, I may. Yes, Mr. Busby. Thank you, yes. Judge. Um, the Falcone decision was based on uh, First Amendment rights of the press. Right. And essentially, the court determined that 
there's no special right to privacy that exists in family law proceeding that's any different from any other court proceedings. Now, all the issues that have been raised by um, Ms. Hauser on behalf of her client, I understand, but they're not, they're not novel. These kinds of issues come up in civil cases of every sort, criminal cases of every sort. Uh, so the thrust of the decision of the Falcone court was once a First Amendment right is implicated, strict scrutiny applies. And uh, under the strict scrutiny analysis, uh, the court is required to uh, take certain, certain steps before it determines that uh, a court proceeding uh, should be closed in any, in any sense. Number one, uh, the party seeking to close the hearing must advance an overriding interest that's likely to be prejudiced. The closure must be no broader than necessary to protect the overriding interest. The trial court must consider reasonable alternatives to closing the proceeding, and the trial court must make findings adequate to support the closure. Um, now, our response to objection, we think, takes into account all of those things. Mm -hmm. uh, our Nevada judges doesn't object to an order prohibiting the parties counsel from uttering publicly the addresses of homes, the names of schools, the dates of birth, social security numbers, you know, bank accounts, nothing, you know, Mr. Falcone is not interested in publishing any, anything like that, quite to the contrary, uh, and the names of any children at hearings. Right. So, uh, and also the issue of filings, Mr. Falcone doesn't intend to unseal uh, any filings unless they rely upon the sealed status as a basis to bar physical access to the courtroom. So a lot of the concerns that have been expressed um, by opposing counsel aren't germane to what's the issues before the court. The issue before the court is whether access under Supreme Court Rule 230 uh, should be permitted uh, and where there are you know, limitations on Mr. Falcone's right to hear or publish certain things. You know, I think he's He's filmed something like 600 proceedings in the state of Nevada. He's well versed in how to handle uh, information. He is subject to orders of the court. You know, if a, an order of the court is violated, he's subject to the same potential penalties as any other person who's under the purview of the court, such as contempt proceedings. He understands that quite well. Um, so, if anything, uh, we think that a proposed order consistent with the the restrictions that we placed in our response from us would be you know would do the job but my concern is where so many of the things that have been brought up by opposing counsel are so far afield and remote and not not germane to the the analysis that the court has to conduct that there's going to be a lot of back and unnecessary back and forth and further argument for the, for the court on the issue that's what i'm worried about and in what way? Mr. Falcone just stipulated, so this would be more of a stipulation of how you're going to do. M Mr. Busby, do you mind if I have Mr. Falcone to kind of step up and do you, I mean, and I guess I should ask Mr. Falcone too, do you, do either of you mind? I'm not, I'm not trying to turn this into anything crazy, but if, you know. Not at all, because Mr. Falcone. I, and I understand I, what you're saying, Mr. Busby. I completely understand it. You know, I, I. That's why I'm trying yeah. to craft it. it. <laughs> Based on everything that I heard thus far, so I'll list it. Redaction of the parents' faces, redaction of the child's face, redaction of the parents' names, redaction of the child's names. That's our standard policy. Even right. if you don't order it, I do it. Right. And then using um, uh, substitute type names for financial, uh, the types of financial accounts and stuff, that's completely fine too. I just want to show the public what what looks to be like a contesting uh, of a prenuptial agreement. I just want to show them what that looks like. I don't need to show them the specific account names and stuff right. like that. I only need to educate them. I don't really need to tell them exactly the types of accounts these people have. Um, this would be the first time we record a hearing like that, which is why I want to do it. Okay. And then, um, you know, when it, and I also understand what my attorney is saying is, the First Amendment issue of access to the courtroom gets conflated with the electronic coverage a lot. And the First Amendment access is a big deal. It's much more rigid, and I agree with his analysis on that. The camera access issue is much more fluid. 
And I'm used to that being something that I, sometimes the judge on the spot will be like, this witness has anxiety or something, they have like some kind of emotional issue. Keep the camera back or off, get off. You know, that kind of stuff is like, played out by ear. Right, turn the camera off for this witness, but you can still take note or take information. Like, right, and that's, I, I, right. I agree that that's a very fluid thing. It depends on who the witness is, you know, like a teacher. They're already probably not wanting to be involved in a case, so right. I understand that. But another witness, like a police officer or a DCFS worker, those we would object and want them on camera. There's a different. It depends. You know, right. It depends on what's going on. So yes, I will work with with um, those things that you mentioned. Yeah, I mean, fine with like them. the listing of the. Like I said, right. I mean, it would be like the listing of the home addresses, right. any property addresses, right. any of those associate documents, because they're you know we do have supplemental briefing coming right. up. That's why I'll take lead. And bank accounts. Mr. Falcone, can you clarify this or Mr. Busby? Because you're on the e service list, do you get every document that's served or does it just, you get notice of it but you can't open it? So I'm just curious for my own edification. No, that's a great edification. question. Because a lot of people talk about right. that. So the documents are only transmitted to us if somebody says it, sends it to us. And even then, most of the documents that we try, like, I don't usually open it unless it's a notice of hearing. But if I did try to open it, because sometimes I'll get an order. Right, like I sign an order, it's open. automatically going to get sent to you. It Do sends you? us a letter. So even if we did, we get this generic letter that's mostly useless. Okay. So you have two different ways of protection. First is I'm just, just uncheck the box. That's completely fine. That's what we've right. been doing. That's I mean, just, totally fine with right. me. I just want the notice of hearings. So I don't miss a hearing. That's all I'm looking for. Or like if I get an order that's directed at me. So okay. sometimes I'll get an immediate request an order, and that's really frustrating that I can't open it because that's for me. Um, or sometimes there'll be some kind of sealing thing going on. I might open that because I might want to see what they're trying to block us from seeing. Okay. But most of the stuff I, I don't look at. And I believe you can check <coughs> if we've opened something or not. I believe there's a way that you can check. I think the attorney might be able to. Yeah, it's, it's, it's very difficult, and it's also a burden. Then we're, we're, we're charging our clients, and I mean, that's an issue that and probably that itself, deserves but. further uh, discussions because between the parties involved. If right. he doesn't have access, I mean, what he's saying is when a motion gets filed, I don't, you're saying you can't open it. I try, if I did try, and it'll send me a letter. Okay. It, it's not really a file. It's a but the notice of hearing you can actually open and you'll yes, see it? Yes, okay. because they changed Because something. it's a clerk. Okay. Somebody did something and made it better. Okay. I just <laughs> need to know when the hearings are. Okay. I'm not trying to go into people's drama. Right. Okay. Yeah, I mean, if we're stipulating, so, I'll take the lead of, like, listing out the documents okay. that are relevant to the April 3rd Are you hearing. putting that in the stipulation? No. No. Oh. I will put, like, in okay. the stipulation... So, like, we stipulate to what Mr. Falcone put on the record right. as far as blurring out, and then the documents related to that, which would be right. um, financial records, records, because one of the, the properties, and I don't want to say it now, but one of the properties, as the court knows, will have additional records right. to it. Right, okay. So the so actual physical records, I'm fine if we can just right. number them out. And if Mr. Uh, Nevada wants to send me, because I, I right. don't see that he has any okay. so, documents filed so, related to it, so the documents expressly related to the issue. So Ms. Hauser will, so Mr. Busby, we've noted you, your argument and statements for the record, and to make it clear for the record, today is more of like a stipulated order, mm -hmm. that the parties have come to the agreement to allow the coverage, and when it comes to the He's already, Mr. Falcone's already said he's not going to list the names and the personal information, but when it comes to the actual assets, the parties have stipulated that they will use numbers so none of that gets disclosed on the record, okay? The record, then so the Ms. documentation. Ms. Hauser will kind of draft the stipulation in order from today's hearing, provide it to Mr. Gabato, Mr. Busby to sign off, review, sign off, and then I'll sign off. Um, and then Ms. Hauser and Mr. Gabato will get together and do your yeah, numbering. Yeah, and hearing's April 3rd, a supplemental yeah. briefing is still due, so. Okay. Oh, that's only a couple weeks away. Is a uh, I don't remember agreeing to anything. Uh huh. <laughs> I haven't agreed to anything on my client's behalf yet. So April um, is a Tuesday? I haven't yeah. stipulated to anything. I, I'm not sure what's being stipulated to. Look, I, here's my position. No, I'm, I'm, no, no, what? No, I'm just talking about the coverage of the. 
Yeah, I don't care about that. He, you know what, Mr. Fuck. The stipulation is about the order today, and that really. I mean, with all due respect, and both Mr. Busby and Ms. Hauser, with um, as Mr. Busby's representing Mr. Falcone, um, the other stipulation—it's it, not really a stipulation. It's just you guys agree to what numbers you're going to use for the assets. And the uh, yeah, I don't care about the documents. And so that's—I mean, so that's kind of like—I guess that's going to be my order—is that you'll use numbers. You guys will just stipulate to what number <laughs> refers to what. Okay. And the hearing is April 3rd, if that's a Friday. She said it's a Wednesday. It's My a clerk Wednesday. says Wednesday. So if we give you, because there is supplemental briefing, can we give you that in advance, like everybody get their supplemental briefing February 28th? On next, by next Friday. I'm sorry, we're not there. Yes, can we do it February March 28th? March 28th. Yeah, can we do it like next March Friday? March 28th. And that's... everybody get their supplemental filing on by Wednesday, so if there's documents that, because there is no documents from the defendant's side. Obviously, okay. there is from plaintiff's right. side. Okay. If everybody could get supplemental filing by Thursday, we could hopefully come to it. But I think even Monday would give your honor hopefully enough time to coordinate your yeah. notes with the number. With the exhibits. Okay, yep. So That's fine. By Monday at the latest, we'll give you the list. And so, and Thursday and so Mr. Falcone, filing. or in, through he or our Nevada judges, will be able to attend on April 3rd. Yep, under the, these conditions. At 10 a.m. Hopefully, around today. <laughs> so I guess I'll submit for the bench trial separate. Is there a trial also sometimes? May. May. Yeah. May 17th. We have the counter call, but May 17th at 9 is the non-jury trial. Okay. Yeah. I mean, because it's going to be fluid depending. Some of these issues, depending on your decision April 3rd, right. could modify. Right. Yeah. Well, once it says on the media requesting the order that the judge can fluidly control well, it. And that's. And I understand their citation to, we should all know, and I do know the SCR rule, but the problem is, is under the Falcone decision, it's ex parte, so we don't know exactly what he's writing, what's in it, and I still haven't I, seen All it he ever form. does is, I want, I mean, set. I still have it in my, it's it's basically his, it's, it's the set. form. Yeah. It's the form from the court. But we don't, I, from a litigation and for the court, and me and me, Mr. Falcone, is, that's an assumption. I mean, it could, he can also write into it. I mean, I've seen the I form. guess you could always... Just so copy the know. two attorneys sure, when you submit it, it to Department L. Yeah. Or that's any, I think yeah, any just, attorney, because that, I think inherently... Well, yeah, that's what I was saying. He would submit to Mr. Glenn. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I guess I can't, whatever you do in other courts. Yeah, I mean, I think that's inherently yeah. some of the problems is they're ex party, and we don't know what is it written in right. that form. I, yeah, I mean, I, 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 today, it, there's <laughs> nothing in it. Okay. It just says, and, and we want to be here is. on April... Third. Yeah, I yeah. mean, that's what I that's gathered all from your order. Yeah. So I will do right. stipulation in order to your attorney want to sign it? And do I need, yeah, yeah, Mr. Well, well, I Mr. Know Busby signed. Sign you wanted me to send it to you it's directly? Fine. And just Mr. Gibato, he's not signing it because he didn't. He... <laughs> I want to be clear. Because obviously, right. until this is, the well, is signed, there Technically, this is a mo it was, I put it on for a hearing based upon their request. I ordered anyone to oppose it that wanted to. And then, of course, I gave our Nevada judges the ability to respond. So, we definitely want Mr. Um, Busby to sign it. And I am saying it right, right, Busby? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Yes, sir. Um, I, we do want him to sign it. Mr. Gabato okay. can or, I mean, I don't know, well, since he didn't object. To, okay, I'll send it to all counsel. And, yeah. Because they can't in five days. until it's Right. Entered. Five days. Okay, yeah, so we need to get that done. Okay. All right, thank yeah, you guys. Just for I the record, Your Honor, just I'm for sorry? the record, my client, just, just for the record, my client doesn't object to publishing the proceedings. That's why we didn't object. Right. We didn't, we didn't respond to anything. He doesn't care one way or the other. That's fine. All right. Thank you, guys. I appreciate you all. Okay, guys, we are in uncharted water here with our first family court case that involves a public figure. Uh, specifically, as you know by now, it's a family court judge that's within the same courthouse. Family court judge presiding over a fellow family court judge's case. So about, I would say, I don't know, I guess I'll put a number on it. I'll say about a third of the interest came from rumors of um, special treatment. I don't want you guys to think that rumors are true just because I hear them and say them. It's a pretty common thing that I hear about all the time in uh, the courthouse, specifically family court. I don't hear about it as much in, uh, I guess you'd call it non-family court. Um, and then the other two-thirds is other rumors 
um, that are tied to the judge's actual job as a judge, not as, um, you know, family court specific private stuff. So I got to this uh, decision making point where I had to decide if we were going to change the policy to make it uh, so that a public figure would be actually, you know, visible in the videos. And initially I was leaning towards yes. And later on, especially as I got through this hearing, what I started to realize was the question is whether or not the redaction is futile and also whether or not the public interest is connected to the actual judge's judicial duties, not so much the private life, at least in this particular case. It might be different in other cases. Um, I do think that there will be situations where a public figure is so public that just because of their, you know, the nature of who they are, redaction is futile. So that would be, I don't know, somebody that just pretty much everyone recognizes their voice um, or that they're just so extraordinarily public that inevitably some other channel or news outlet will use the videos and they'll just disclose everything. This is not that situation. I don't believe so. That This could change and if it does change then I'll revisit it. But I was asking myself, um, at this juncture, if most of our viewers, or if all of our viewers watched the video, would they actually go into internet sleuth mode and look it up? Probably some of them, but I would say most of them are just going to be happy to know that they're watching a proceeding that involves a judge, and they probably won't care. They probably won't look into it any further than that. Um, as for, you know, the possibility that some sleuths do look into it and find out who the judge is, well, that's completely fine, and in fact, I've always said this from day one, is the redactions were never meant to make it impossible to determine who the participants were, they were just meant to mitigate. Most people on YouTube consume the content and move on. There are a small percentage of people who look into things, and that's totally fine. So if that happens in this particular case, then that happens. I mean... And if it happens to the extent that a major mainstream media outlet picks it up, then I may decide to change what I'm doing here. But for now, at this point, I'm going to just leave things the way that they are. And um, in some ways, this uh, video is also an experiment to see what occurs when we cover um, a public figure of this nature. Uh, the other thing that I was going to mention is, uh, since this is not a change of policy, I'm not going to run it by... Our Nevada judges has a board now, but obviously if the policy was going to change, I would run it by them and get input from other people. So for now, I'm just doing what our Nevada judges ordinarily does anyway. So I'm just going to continue to do that and I'm going to continue to redact uh, the judge, uh, her ex, and um, of course any information concerning the child. Uh, so yeah, the, the last thing I'd like to mention is, and this is I guess something that uh, you could call it I guess a good point. Yes, insiders to the courthouse know who it is. Yes, I mean, the legal community knows who it is. These people know who it is. There's a blog that talks about it. All of these people know who it is. And that's something that, believe it or not, does not require any of the videos. That's where most of the information came from. And so just because people know what's going on doesn't mean we can't cover those cases. Those particular, um, I guess you'd call them communities, the legal community, they're going to know what's going on just because that's what they do day in and day out when they go to work. And um, in fact, a lot of the harm that comes from situations like this where rumors spread is because people don't have access to the actual information. The publication of these videos um, is just as likely to prove rumors true and bring concerns that are valid to the public as it is to vindicate the judge and to prove rumors false. So the, the publication of the videos themselves isn't going to make the situation any worse than it already is in the general public interest sense. I want to stress that. Of course it could make things worse for the actual judge if there's misconduct or some kind of scandal. Obviously, that's the case. But that is not the concern of a news reporter. The concern of a news reporter is to get accurate, accurate and relevant information to the public. So I hope that this uh, commentary is useful to you guys. I know that this is going to be a big giant question mark for our Nevada judges. Um, the viewers of our Nevada judges, the supporters, the legal community, the judiciary, etc. And so I did want to do this sort of, take this sort of extra step and actually explain to you guys um, my thought process, the decision to keep the policy the way that it was for now, but also to express to all of you that of course I have an open mind and that the policy may change going forward uh, depending on um, how coverage of these types of cases goes.